For a lot of us, ever since we were kids, we wanted to be racing car drivers. We wanted to be motorsport stars. I know for me, anytime there was a race on, I'd be glued to the TV screen, watching every single minute of every single race that I could catch. And afterwards, I would grab my Matchbox cars and I'd sit there and reenact all those battles right on my carpet. And I remember as the years went on, as I started getting more into the consoles, I remember playing F194. And I would sit there and race against Damon Hill, Michael Schumacher, and try to battle for those championships and recreate those memories of the races that I saw them compete in. If you're a long-term sim racer, you already know what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. This video is aimed more towards the newer sim racers that have probably just made the jump from the consoles onto the PC or just brand new PC sim racers, period. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the different kinds or different competition systems that are out there so we can get out there and do some multiplayer racing against other people across the whole entire world. So competition systems are the online systems that sim racers use to go out there and have multiplayer racing and also have ranking systems and whatnot that are out there that show how well you do against other sim racers and how you can improve your license and ranking and everything like that to include also being able to participate in special events that are out there. And I'm not gonna be able to get into every single competition sim system that is out there. I'm just gonna go over the ones that I know and probably are the most popular ones that are available for everybody to get into. And again, depends on what kind of sim that you use as your main sim for racing. So without further ado, let's get into the first one. And again, it's in no particular order. I'm just gonna go off and name them. So let's get into number one. So let's get the big guy out of the way, and that's iRacing. Now, iRacing is a sim that people either love or they love to hate. And that's really because of how iRacing's pay for service works, meaning you have to pay a monthly fee to access all of iRacing's services, regardless if you're gonna be doing some hot lapping by yourself and racing against other people. On top of that, you do have to buy cars and tracks separately, meaning if there's a specific car and track combo and you wanna race it and you don't have those, either the car or the track, you have to buy it. Now, if you're racing against other people that have the cars that you don't own, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to buy the cars that other people are racing. You just have to buy the car and track combo that you want to race in if you don't own it. Now, our racing has a really good competition system. They have all you know online races that happen every hour on the hour that you can join, and they have multiple different disciplines from open wheelers to GT cars to ovals, dirt, rallycross. You know, it, they have almost unlimited options of what you can race in iRacing. Now, how iRacing does this competition system is, is you go out there, you find a race, and depending on your I rating and your safety rating determines on if you can race in that series or not. Your I rating is not gonna affect if you can join that race, but it is gonna determine the, what field or what split you're gonna get a, put into. So let's say, for example, you have an I rating of 1500, it's gonna try to put you in a race server of similar skilled people. So it's not gonna put you against people who are 6,000 or 7,000 I rating. You know, unless there's not enough people. If there's more than enough people, it will put you in people that are similarly matched to you in I rating. And then you also have the safety rating. The safety rating it determines your license. So you're first gonna start off as a rookie, meaning your options are gonna be very limited. You're gonna be racing, you know, the Mazda Cup car or similar cars like that. And you've gotta build your safety rating, you know, to get your D-class license, C-class B and A-class. If you're feeling frisky and you're really good, you can go after your pro license that's gonna help, you know, get you to race against eSport drivers that are out there. And how that works is, you know, depending on when you, where you finish in a race, so for example, if you finish in the top five, it's gonna give you a bigger I rating boost versus where if you finish in the bottom 10. But again, that also depends on your I rating versus the field that you're in. So if you finish higher than people that have way more I rating than you, you're gonna gain more I rating. Or if you finish, you know, behind people that have lower I rating than you, you're gonna lose a lot more I rating than you normally would. And with your safety rating, that is determined on how many incidents you get in a race. Um, so depending on how many incidents, it could even disqualify you from the race. But generally, is the safer the driver that you are, the more safety rating you're gonna earn, and that's gonna help boost you towards getting your next license. 
The one thing I don't like about the safety rating in iRacing is, is it doesn't really lay blame on anybody when a contact happens, whether it's your fault or that other person's fault. It's gonna dock you the same amount of safety rating. And that can hurt you in some races. So if you're right in a line, you know, in a lobby that has a lot of dirty drivers, or not to say dirty drivers, but let's say not so skilled drivers and there's a lot of contact, that is gonna affect your safety rating. It could even demote you too if you're on that cusp of you know getting demoted too. So I wish iRacing would do something about that where some of the other systems are out there and the other titles they do have you know at fault you know deduction for points. But right now iRacing doesn't do that. But the great thing about iRacing, like I said, is there's tons of races that are happening depending on what races you want to do. And they do offer about monthly special events that are going on for endurance events like you could do the 24 hours of Nürburgring, 12 hours spa. They got all sorts of different special events that happen every month if you have the right you know, safety rating or license to participate in those. And the other great thing about iRacing is you are gonna run into real world drivers. Like, you know, if you get put into a room and you see Rubens Barrichello or Max Verstappen or even Daniel Morad, you probably are racing against those people in the game. So, you know, if you meet them, have fun with them and have fun with the racing. So not all Sims have a competition system that's out there. So this is where, for example, low fuel motorsports comes into play if you're a big fan of Assetto Corsa or Assetto Corsa Competizione. Now, Lofi Motorsports offers you a ranking system or a multiplayer system where you can compete against the other people across the world. And you know you can see how well you do. And same thing as iRacing, it does have a licensing system and a safety rating, and that determines how you get placed into a race. So once you sign up with Low Field Motorsports, you have to earn your license. So that means you have to do a hot lapping race where you do five laps with no incidents, and you have to be below the time threshold that gives you your initial license to be able to go out there and race against other people. And as you build up your safety rating, that's gonna increase your license and it's gonna open up more races for you. So with Low Field Motorsport, they do also offer special events that happen almost on a monthly and a weekly basis where you can participate in special events that are going on in Esero Corsa and Esero Corsa Competizione. So the next competition system that's out there is the one from Studio 397 and Motorsport Games, and that covers two sim racing titles. So it's gonna cover R Factor 2 and Le Mans Ultimate. So now this system is still very early, it's still kind of new, and they're building upon it. So it's not as functional as Low Fleet Motorsports or even iRacing's competition system, but it does offer you the ability to join online races every hour on the hour for the most part. So it started off with R Factor 2, that's where they were kind of testing and everything, and then they brought it over to Le Mans Ultimate. Now, again, like you can race the online races every hour, but they have a licensing system that's similar to iRacing where you have your, your driver rating and you have your safety rating. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start off as a bronze three and you have to be able to you know, upgrade that all the way up to gold one. So with Bronze 3, it's really going to offer you one race at the start on the hour, which is going to be GTEs and LMP2s, and that rotates on the hour. So one race will be GTEs, the next race will be LMP2s, and it's going to be on the same track for that whole entire week. And once the week is over, it's going to rotate to a new track. But as you upgrade your license, so you go from Bronze to Silver, it's going to open up more races for you to do, to include be able to race in the hypercars. Like I said, this system is still brand new. It doesn't offer you league racing. It doesn't offer you like the endurance events that iRacing or ACC does. You know, we're trying to do driver swaps because right now Le Mans Ultimate doesn't have driver swap capability in it just yet. That is an update that is gonna be coming in the game later on. So once that happens, they'll be able to do, you know, the bigger online endurance events. So you can do, you know, 24 hours of spa or, you know, those races right there. Uh, but again, it's still in its infancy, it's still getting built up. It's a very good system. I really like how, you know, LMU and the whole system works because it does have at fault 
safety system where, for example, someone hits you, they take a bigger hit to their safety rating versus you. And if you hit somebody, you take a bigger hit to your safety rating. And they do have a protest system within their, you know, with, within their way, but it's not as automated, let's say, for example, as iRacing or low fuel motorsports. So the next one up is for you Automobilista 2 fans, and that's Racecraft Online. So Racecraft Online is solely dedicated to Automobilista 2. And Automobilista 2 has a lot of ca different cars on there that you can use, to, you know, from road cars, even to have some rally cross cars. So Racecraft Online offers all of those races for you guys. They do have a licensing system like that includes your driver's rating and your safety rating that you have to build up in order to be able to participate in the, in the races. So they do have hourly races and they do have weekly races. And again, depending on what your license is, that determines what races you're eligible to participate in. They don't have a rating system or like, you know, it's a system that, you know, that lays blame more on the hip driver that hits you or not. It's based off, it's a no fault system. And it's just what it is because that's what AMS2 outputs. It doesn't assign blame to anything. So that's what they really have to go off of. But again, if you're an AMS2 fan and you're trying to find a system out there that you can race against other people without having to join the lobbies, you know, that are hosted, you know, through AMS2, Racecraft Online is a really great option for you guys. Another one is for you ACC fans. So there is another system out there called pitskills.io. So pitskills.io works very similar to the way low fuel motorsports works where they do have hourly, daily, and weekly races to include special events and they offer leagues as well that you can sit there and join if you want to. They do have a driver system where that gives you a specific license, depending on how you level it, you know, that increases and boosts up your license and allows you to participate in more races. They don't have, uh, their driver rating system is a no fault system, which means that, you know, it calculates how many incidents that you have, how many off tracks, and that is what determines how much of your rating that you gain or could potentially lose in a race. With pitskills.io, they do offer driver profiles so you can go and look at other people's races, and then they do offer your own stats that you can go and look at after each race to see how well you've done in your, in your past several races, or look at other people to see and compare yourself against other people. It's a pretty good system that's out there if you're an AC fan and is a pr pretty good alternative to low fuel motorsports. If you're not having fun in low fuel motorsports, you can give pitskills.io a try to see if you like it. Well guys, that's the list that I have. I know I did not mention a lot of the other systems that are out there. There's a lot more that people can use for all the different sims that are there, but these are the ones that I know about or people have been talking to me about and I want to get those out there so you guys know about it. And if you want you know, an alternative to low fuel motorsports or iRacing, you know, we want to do stuff in AMS2 or, you know, any of the other sims that are out there. If I did miss one that you, that you really do enjoy, let me know down in the comments below and I'll make sure I mention it in, you know, in some of our next videos. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked them, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when we have more videos. And if you want to become a member of the Sim Pit, we do have a Discord. I'm gonna include a link to all these websites and competition systems that I mentioned to include our Discord. They're gonna be in the description down below. But until next time, guys, I hope you have fun racing. Later.